Hey everybody, Rodham here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 11 of Stationeers. So last I left off, I was working on my heating, uh, ventilation, and air conditioning, HVAC, hence the title of the episode. And it occurs to me that I'm going to need to uh, add in two more kit tanks to my base. Uh, when I say it occurs to me, it occurs to Crunk Spleen and some other people. Um, so Crunk had the idea of not only adding tanks to the base, but adding an, uh, a breathable atmosphere tank. Um, so a pre-mixed gas tank, which I think is a great idea. There's a lot of reasons to do that, but um, first and foremost, uh, we can have atmosphere on demand as a result. Uh, much, much faster than relying on gas mis mixers and things like this. If this doesn't make sense to you, it will uh, in due time. All right, so what I'm going to do is, let's see, add in two more frames here, one on each side. And one's going to have NOS, nitrous oxide, and the other is going to have um, our pre-mixed gas. And as a result, that means that we're not going to need this window. Bye-bye window. Wouldn't really make sense to have a window in the base like that anymore. Also, I have one cereal bar left, so we're just about uh, going to need to um, make a microwave and, and stuff that allows me to eat. Uh, not quite yet, but pretty soon. This expands the floor print of the base. Um, I'm not going to expand the levels above me, uh, but I will expand this one. Okay, so what we're going to need is two more kit tanks. Kit tank. And then I can actually start working on the gas mix. Now another thing I wanted to do is to stop using the fabricator, uh, mostly because its filtering doesn't really work. As you can see, that button's grayed out. I might not know how to use it properly, but no, I don't want an ammo box. But uh, it's not searchable. I'm clicking. I don't know if you can hear my mouse feverishly uh, smashing the keys here. Uh, but as you can see, it's just one giant list of stuff that's not um, searchable very easily. What did I just click? What, what is going on here? Why can't my character move? Okay, and not only that, but then the uh, fabricator is trying to consume my body. It just like grabbed me or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, all right, so we'll pop these out. The ingots of compounds, I'm just gonna for now throw into the electric printer, just so they don't roll away. It's too bad that they're uh, cylindrical. And then I'm going to need kit tanks, which is steel and copper. And then speaking of steel and copper, before it becomes daytime, let me do a little bit of smelting. Alright, so we're going to put one ice and two volatiles. And we'll try to smelt the, melt the ice. We'll smelt the gold, which... Uh, will take a little bit longer to uh, to do on an arc furnace. And then what I'm gonna do is while it's cool enough oh no, it's already too it's already daytime. So I can't split my stacks very easily. Alright, so we want two more kit tanks. Now the beauty of these things is I just type in tank and boom. Plus they work faster and they work with less power. So all the more reason. Now, it looks to me like I don't have any coal here, which is going to limit my ability to make steel. All right, I only wanted two. And one will be for nitrous oxide and one will be for uh, breathable atmosphere the Atmo tank. I wish I could have a large tank, but large tanks are massive. They're they're honestly just too big for me to to use on a base this small. 
Um, they're honestly just too big. They're they're like a yeah. Uh, they're they're enormous. All right, here's my last cereal bar. My diet has been a delicious, uh, massive amount of cereal bars. Um, all right, so I'm gonna have steel frames here and here eventually, and this will allow me to have control panel type stuff here, because uh, the airlock is gonna be here. So these will be control panel areas, uh, which is uh, much needed real estate, because if you want to be able to control your base, you need a, a place to put the controls. And most of my base has been windows, which are nice, don't get me wrong, but they're not exactly... Uh, it, 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 it looks really bad if you... It is possible to slap dials and controls pretty much anywhere you want. All you got to do is put them on a frame and then remove the frame. Some things that doesn't work with, um, some things will actually f fall off as soon as you remove it from the frame, but a lot of a lot of stuff just sort of remains there. Um, okay, so we've windowed that up. I'm stockpiling our junk out here. Now, as you can picture, there'll be a staircase or even maybe a patio and then the airlock doors and then we enter. Uh, all right, so at the moment, this tank here is becoming super pressurized. Um, now, the beautiful thing about the tanks versus pipes, the tanks have a higher capacity for pressure than the pipes do. So you're never really going to lose a tank. Your pipes are gonna burst first. Uh, so if we take a look at this X tank, it has 30 uh, MPA in it. Uh, at about 60 something, the pipes burst. Uh, the really cheap and easy way to fix this is to deconstruct it and reconstruct it. I am passing the buck, uh, but as you can see, that totally resets the uh, the tank's um, you know problem of of having gases is it, it overpressuring it. So checking your oxygen tank. Still paltry. I still have a pretty paltry amount of gas in my base. Just not a whole lot of oxygens. I, I, I'm probably going to need to melt a lot of gases to really achieve what I need. So I'll need to eventually have like a gas, uh, a f like a furnace that I set up over there just to melt stuff to input it. Now the only problem with that is when you melt stuff in the furnace, it, whatever you melt will be cold. Oddly enough, it doesn't. The furnace doesn't innately heat it up when you try to melt it. So if I melt a bunch of oxide, uh, it will be very cold oxide, which can be challenging to try to keep your base temperate uh, when you, you know, introduce a lot of frozen stuff. All right. So the next thing I need to do is to set up where my uh, pressure regulators are going to go. And I, I was thinking about this, and here is what I came up with. I want to hide them. I don't want the, I want the vents, obviously the vents have to be visible into the base, but nothing else really needs to. Uh, I can hide a lot of the stuff in the crawl space between floors. Uh, so I know right now it's a frame, eventually it will be a crawl space, it will be hollow between the floors, and not accessible from the rest of the base because then it will would need to be pressurized. Um, so what I'm going to do is add the pressure regulators into this crawl space and um, then set the pressure regulators up to be controlled remotely through consoles. So this here, I believe we wanted a pressure regulator. And as you can see, the controls here are going to not be facing the inside of that room. Uh, and that is by design because I don't want my room full of a cluster of um, dials and switches and things. Uh, I want it to be a little bit more elegant than that. And this is the solution I'm going to come up with. Um, all right, the other pressure regulator will go on the other side. I actually don't really need to 
to immediately uh, put that frame back. It doesn't, doesn't, it's, it's not, uh, doesn't matter that much. Yeah, this base is going to be very ripped apart while it's a work in progress, like an extraordinary amount. And that's just um, the nature of the beast here. And I think I think what I'm going to do is have a pressure regulator per vent um, rather than have them share pipes. I could have them share pipes. That actually wouldn't be... Yeah, maybe I'll have them share pipes. It would cut down on my power for my HVAC by half, which is the true advantage of uh, doing it this way. So I'll do it. I'll do it the slightly power cheaper way. Power is not that much of a concern. Uh, the beautiful thing about solar is you can just keep adding more of it and more of it. Um, there's an unlimited amount of sunlight during the day and you really you're not really all that restricted. At some point you can generate enough power to blow out heavy cables. Uh, but that's really not likely to happen uh, without, like, a massively industrial-sized base. So we're going to have a pressure regulator and a back pressure regulator. Um, the back pressures are going to come from this way. So what I could do is... Let's set them up side by side. One pressure regulator. And one back pressure regulator. And these will regulate the pressure of the bottom floor. All right. So the pressure regulator is, we're gonna need some pipes. All right, let's grab our, nope, I want a little iron. And, well, the arc furnace is not doing anything, we'll just have it do copper. I'm going to need a lot of copper for this. So these pipes, once we have the uh, ceiling panels and all that stuff built, uh, they'll cease to be visible. So that's an important thing to know. Is when you finish off with ceiling panels, ceiling panels will conceal pipes and things. They will not conceal control panels. And by control panels, I mean things like the pressure regulators. They will stick through. Uh, but I don't want a room full of weird switches and dials. Uh, I could build it that way. Um, it's actually easier to build it that way. Uh, and then you end up with a base that's very complicated looking like the International Space Station. Um, totally up to you if you want to build that way. I'm choosing not to. Uh, I'm choosing to have more of a home and less of a science base if that's a, uh, a fair sort of assessment. All right, so let's go ahead and now that we have our pressure regulator down, we can put the steel frames back. Oh, that's already back, all right. And I seem to be missing a steel frame. But that's okay. All right, let's go get some more pipes. And I'm gonna have to do this for every floor. Um, I only had 40 something iron in the uh, pipe bending unit. So it's not going to make more pipes than I could use. It's gonna run out. I'm gonna stop it for now. 
because I have 34. That's a good amount. So the back pressure regulators. Here's the input. So the input's actually facing the wrong way. I'm going to spin that around. So the input is now facing back. Uh, looks like I can't add pipes near the um, near the elevators. So I'm going to have to T-junction this right here. And keep in mind that these pipes here, uh, once we have ceiling tiles or panels, uh, will not be visible anymore. So I don't want to bury the pipes so deep into the crawl space that they're not visible. Uh, the problem with that would be if they burst, let's say I have an overpressurization, uh, it's very going to be very, very difficult for me to do any maintenance on a burst uh, pipe that is not easily accessible. So you want them somewhat accessible, but uh, you don't, however, want them to um, be like hanging into your base or whatever. I mean, maybe you do. I know I don't know I can't speak for you but I know I certainly wouldn't appreciate a base designed like that it'd be ugly all right so the kit vent making sure that it's yep laid out the same all right let's go back into the crawl space area and of course I've already all right let's not keep putting that there so my pressure regulator um, and my, oops, my back pressure regulator are kind of running into one another a little bit. Uh, so this is output. Yeah, we're going to have to lay this out a little bit differently just so that they don't bump into one another. Uh, additionally, I could always set it up in the space behind the base back here that I actually intended to have be reserved for this sort of thing. Um, so that's always a, a possibility that I might, I might do right now. I think that's smarter than having it, a uh, bunch of pipes sort of collide in the middle of the base. All right, so we'll, we'll spin these back around. Uh, this is my fault. Better to correct it now when I don't have a lot of groundwork laid down than having to correct it later when it's an honest to god nightmare. All right, so the back pressure. Um, actually, having it lead here is perfect because this is the input. This is the start to our filter. So we'd want the start to our filter and the back pressure to be in the same area. So this is sort of ideal. Uh, where what we would do is, uh, where's my wrench? I can actually just hook this up now and it's one more source of air to be pulled uh, into our filtration. So now that, act that, that vent there, it doesn't have a back pressure yet uh, right now, it's just acting as a passive vent to pull air, but it will eventually get uh, a back pressure. Just laying it all out. And then I have a whole mix of crazy piping everywhere just to try to get the oxygen that I'm going to require. Um, and that's something I'm going to clean up later for sure. So it looks like I can run pipe. Nope, I cannot run pipe. Uh, oof, it's really going to be challenging to access this pipe. I thought I could run pipe through the elevator frames, but that is definitely not the case. Alright, we can run it like that.
Now, if we want this regulated off of one regulator, uh, the regulator would have to go, like, here. Um, that's not exactly the, in my opinion, the perfect spot for it, so I might lay these out a little bit differently in the future. But that's essentially what our back pressure would look like. And then our pressure, uh, the pressure regulators are going to be coming off of the, um, the, this tank here. So this tank is going to be a special tank. Well, it could really be any of these tanks. I might want to have it be the last tank. Uh, it's going to be a special tank where it's going to have a pre-mixed gas mix of like, let's say, 70% uh, nitrogen, 20%, uh, you know, oxygen, 10% CO2. That's not exactly what the, the what the atmosphere on Earth is. It's, it's more like 80% nitrogen or 78% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, 2% CO2. Maybe I'll have it be that kind of mix. And uh, that's going to then... This tank will have all the atmosphere uh, storage that the base uses, and that will pump out to the rest of the base. So if I want to start pre-mixing gases like that, uh, I would need a... I already have nitrogen, CO2, and oxygen contained. What I would need to do is to run plumbing or pipes from my tanks to gas mixers to the... Uh, uh, this tank, this storage tank here. Um, but before I even do that, this storage tank here is going to then become responsible for feeding the entire base full of atmosphere, uh, which is a big task. Um, so, yes. So, I'm just sort of brainstorming about how I want to lay this out, in other words. which takes me a second. So the gas mixers are, uh, let's just get the gas mixers up. Get tank on. That's, gas mixers are easy enough to do. That's gonna be on the pipe bending unit. And we're gonna need uh, some gold, huh? So these are pretty straightforward, the, the way the gas mixers work. And then I have to decide, do I want to hide the gas mixers or do I want to have them visible? So if I hide them, I'm going to need to put them somewhere. Um, or I could just have them be visible. I'm not exactly sure I want to slap a bunch of gas mixers down on the floor. It does look like the edge of the um, elevator is a viable surface to put stuff. No, actually, it really anywhere. Uh, so what I could do if I want to hide the gas mixers is put them up in the crawl space. So what I'm going to do is just remove a lot of the crawl space here. And what this is going to look like, so this is my oxygen tank. I'm going to then need to, come on. Send my oxygen up into the crawl space. And this is going to be true of pretty much all the gases. Any gas that I want to use, I'm going to have to send uh, upwards. And I'm going to not have the... I'm going to have these types of pipes that aren't attached to the vents be higher than the other pipes. As sort of like a design idea. Alright, I want access to these pipes. So I'm going to also need to do that with CO2. Uh, and nitrogen. So this is my CO2 tank. And my nitrogen tank.
you quickly learn to appreciate that here on Earth, you don't actually need to do any of this crazy stuff. You can just breathe and not have to think about what you're breathing exactly. Alright, so the night all three of my tanks that I need to breathe the gases are now um, have plumbing or piping all the way out to the crawl space. As you can see the the stuff up there, it's getting I know it looks real messy and it's hard to keep track of everything. Uh, but I knew that this is exactly how you design a base. Alright, so now we have these three pipes. Oops, let me wrench that as well. And yeah, as, as I mentioned a lot, uh, eventually this crawl space will be hollow. So we'll be able to walk around in here. It will be vac it will be Martian atmosphere and not base atmosphere because I don't want to spend that much atmosphere to pressurize all of it. But all this will be um, uh, will be uh, traversable, so to speak. All right. So then the next thing I need to do is to decide how exactly I'm going to do the gas mix. Um, with the gas mixers. So the mixers take in two types of gas and then at whatever percentages you set them at, you can have them, you basically decide what the mix is going to be. So first, I'm going to mix nitrogen and CO2. And then I'm going to mix that mix with oxygen. Just because that's how my... um. That's how my uh, my base is sort of laid out here. So what I'm looking to do is to put a gas mixer here, and then a gas mixer here. Um, actually, this last gas mixer, I could have maybe over here. The symmetry is going to be lost at some point, so this is this would be one of those points. All right, gas mixer there. Uh, and honestly, just to make it cleaner, this mixer is going to be like that. Okay, so this mixer is going to have input one of input one of co2 input two of nitrogen and these pipes actually as i build them are going to be filling up with uh the gas that is determined so there's not really room for mistake and i'll prove that so if i take out my tablet this pipe is already full of nitrogen and this pipe is already full of co2 because they're connected um, and then I have to decide the mix. So what I'm going to do is input two is going to be the the vast majority of this mix. So if we want about one percent CO two, um, we're going to yeah. So let's say two percent CO two, just so that the plants don't starve. Um, we need 4% here because then some of this gas is going to be uh, mixed with oxygen and its percentages will lower as a result. And then this gas mixer here, this next one, let me uh, rotate it better. Come on, rotate. Uh, put it there this gas mixer will take in the oxygen and as long as the mixers aren't powered they're not doing anything they're not going to start mixing and then if you run out of gas to mix um, the mixer stops so it, it doesn't just keep mixing so input uh, 2 here is going to be uh, 80% and in input 1 will be 20%. Um, that way we'll have 20% oxygen, 
Which is about real. Um, the atmosphere of Earth, for a point of reference, there's a lot of gases in the atmosphere of Earth that aren't, of course, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. Like, there's a lot of argon in there. Uh, so Earth is actually less than, far less than 1% carbon dioxide. But just for the sake of this game, I'm having it be higher. Um, all right. We're also going to want a... Um, microwave because I'm hungry and I don't want to eat raw potato so what do we need for this microwave gold and iron I have iron here or gold here and let's actually just crank out some iron I'm just taking a look at what else. Seeing if there's anything else I want to build, but no, this will work. All right, that's enough iron. And another thing I haven't done is I haven't gone into my farm for a very, very, very long time to like manage the crops or anything. So I ought to do that as well. How much? Okay, I want to babysit this. Making sure that we don't make like five microwaves while I'm away managing the plants. That would be a waste of resources. And then we're also going to want a bench to put the microwave on. So let's make kit furniture so here's our microwave uh, we need a little bit of copper so I'm gonna pop this open there's my copper make one kit furniture and this is how you would cook uh, normally so I'll just uh, finish this off and that will be about the wrap of the episode actually running a little long but that's okay so I hadn't done this because I had all the cereal bars uh, to rely upon but uh, now that uh, my dude's actually hungry we'll get him some food I also like to store my ingots either in storage or in the benches here because um, free floating they might I wouldn't say disappear. Eh, I'm just going to say disappear. Something bad might happen to them. Also, given that I'm not using this fabricator and it's enormous and gets in the way, I'm going to break this fab down and store it. I will eventually put the fab back. There are things that the fab can make that nothing else can. Um, but for the moment, doing the bulk of the base, I'm not going to need a fabricator. So I'll get rid of it because it just takes up a lot of space. So what I need to do to do some cooking is to put a bench in, and I'm just installing the bench right where the uh, the fabricator was, so I don't have to add any additional um, cabling. And then just drop the microwave on top, grab a wrench, and wrench the microwave down. Turn on the bench, turn on the microwave. Um, the microwave currently doesn't have anything in it, and the door was open. So if you want to make something, you could grab a potato. This is just a, a baked potato. So I'm going to add one potato and close the microwave and microwave it. And this is making a baked potato. And there's a large list of ingredients. But basically, a baked potato is far more nutritious than a raw potato. If you need to eat a raw potato, you can. And there's a lot of other recipes. Um, like, you can make cereal bars again you can make uh, fries um, I can demonstrate one more but a baked potato really took the edge off I went from 20% hunger to essentially full 
Uh, I don't know why there is 0% of my potato left. Uh, but let's, before I end this episode, let's do a little bit of farming, because I hadn't done that in a while. And that's a, a good thing to do. There we go. Now I ate the last of the potato. There was, it, it rounded down, I suspect. Now this farm isn't perfect in the fact that it will get rid of all of its um, built up oxygen. Um, but it will probably never hit 100% oxygen. Just the, given the way it's laid out. So we'll take the soybeans first. I'm just going to work from front to back because it's easier. We've got corn. And you can make popcorn. You can make uh, soy oil. Stuff like this. Uh, let's go ahead and put this in our backpack. But nothing feeds you quite like potatoes. The uh, harvest yields are higher, as you could tell. And there we go. Farm is fully uh, managed. We have yielded three corn, three soy, and six potatoes. Voila. I'll put this away. Come on. Door. Thank you, door. Uh, we don't really need the bench on anymore. Oh, that wasn't corn. 11 corn now. That's pretty good. 9 soybeans. I mean, this is obviously... Well, we have more potatoes than we even need. And that is cooking 101. Um, so if you have any questions for me, feedback of any type... Uh, drop me a line if you want to discuss stationers or uh, discuss, you know, future plans or give me feedback about things to add to the base, stuff like that. I'm always ears for it. If you liked it, like, subscribe, maybe become a patron. I hope that you tune in next time. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.